Walker. Um, first item on the agenda would be public forum. Does anyone speak in public forum? Seeing none. Uh, move to action items. So we have a couple of subcommittee reports with uh, action items along with those. So we'll start with the policy subcommittee, Eileen. Okay, you have uh, the changes, the sections that are changed in your packet there or online and the red, red thing. Eileen, why don't you just qu read that, the, the very brief policy report that you have and we'll approve that and then do the action items. Changes to the FY20 handbooks for all five schools were discussed. Lengthy discussion was only required for the dress code changes for Watertown Middle School. Emphasis was directed at keeping guidelines non-gendered and positive rather than negative in tone. All changes, as shown in red here in the school committee packet insert, were approved by three to zero vote of the subcommittee. Okay, thanks. So before we move to those, just, is there a motion to approve the report? So moved. Second. Second, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, thank you. Okay, so let's go to the. So I don't know if you have any questions. Why don't we do them, should do them one at a time? Sure. We've got um, uh, like three, four actually, four documents, mm -hmm. I think. That makes sense. The first one is the elementary common handbook updates. So this is, we're, we're at a point now, if I remember correctly, where each, ele we don't, no, elementary schools is one for all three. Yes. One handbook for all three. Yep, with one introductory section for each of the schools that pertains to routines and um, that are germane to the school, but the actual policies in the handbook are common for all three. Okay. Any questions about the? I have a question. Um, and I don't know if the one in the electronic packet isn't updated, but on on page four, um, the last part before it actually lists the school committee membership, it says that. There was a resignation, there's only six members, and it says current as of September 2017, but the list is actually current to right now. And so I think it's just a, Cleanup. the names were updated, but not the two or three sentences yeah, before that. Not That's all. Before when I had, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I oh, there's a four at yeah. the bottom of it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so it's like the couple sentences right before that are just not, okay. you know, not accurate. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had cleaned that up last year, but I think they must have used mm -hmm. their previous years the old to version. start again. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll clean that back up again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions on this? So, should we go through and vote these now? Let's do while we go through them. Is that okay. So, is there a motion to approve the uh, elementary yes. common handbook? Up so moved. Second. Fine. Any what other is discussion? Fight? Who, who moves it? Who moves it? Yeah. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Nice to have it. Thank you. I'm doing the next one. I got. It. Next would be the middle school handbook. Any particular changes there that you want to note? I, I would just uh, acknowledge the fact that there was an excellent discussion around this, and I think that the principal, along with the yes. Um, I'm not going to speak for the subcommittee, but myself, I think we arrived at um, what we think is a good dress code policy for the middle school. Um, I would also like to just comment that the, um, the principals are not here this evening. It was opening day, so <laughs> I, I felt that they have big meetings tomorrow, yes. so I right. said they didn't have to come. Right. <laughs> just They would be here n under normal circumstances. Right. I noticed one thing they changed, the, the, the times of the, the dances that they yes. have. Yes. Yep. They, they half an hour earlier. Half an hour. Uh, Sounds right. Earlier. Less. Yeah, they were finding that there was a lot of pickup issues and that yep. this would help minimize yep. that. I think we were going to put the pickup, new pickup. The policy was on the handbook. Is this the handbook yeah. we're looking at? Is this the common one, though? Uh, uh, are we going to put where they're going to, kids going to be picked up? I can't remember. We just that, discussed that. That was in, I read it somewhere. What, it wasn't in here someplace? Yeah, there's a procedure. She was going to add it to the. It was noted in a number of places in yeah. it. Yeah, it's on sure. page. Um, there you go. Yeah, she had said the red numbers. That's yeah. <laughs> the red numbers. It's on page six, right 69 of the red numbers. 69 of the red numbers. 69 of the red numbers. Oh, there you go. Yes. Yep. See? Oh, great. At the Perfect. Waverly Avenue door. There you Perfect. go. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what we talked about. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, look, and then sixth graders for the store, and then, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the middle school handbook? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thanks. And then we have the high school handbook. I did well, note. this is cleaning up things that were no longer applicable or the dates were wrong. I did mention to, to, to Didi earlier, somewhere the, the page numbering gets off. Um, you know, like by page student conduct, it starts on page 31, not 33. So I didn't pin down exactly where it started, but someplace it got off. Yes. Are you, so you're not referring to the red numbers? No. Well, this is, a uh, red number would be uh, like uh, 78. This is just the table of contents. Yeah. And I noticed like student conduct is actually on page 31 of the handbook. And on the table of contents is page <coughs> 33. So somewhere they got... Before that, it got off, and I don't didn't pin it down. But she'll rerun the table of contents before uh, she needs to go back and yep. check it again. Anything else? No. Good. So, is there a motion to approve the high school handbook? So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nice have it. And then the last is the. Section 2, the Student and Parent Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. So this goes through lots of policies. <coughs> it's a very policy-driven um, handbook that the policies pertain to all students across the district. So um, anything that's in red this year is just updates based on the policy updates that we did as, a, um, as you, you all did as a school committee. So um, there isn't anything that's new other than updating the policies that needed to be updated. And then there's a signature page, mm -hmm. is that the end? Right? Yes, yep, so this year actually um, we are piloting in an online um, form that parents will fill out that they can go, instead of using the actual paper, but we're including the paper because not all parents have access to the online system and you know, since it's a pilot, we're going to have to work through some kinks, so we're gonna do both this year. Um, but as long as people can get in through the online registration system, which will provide information to parents um, once the first week of school has passed, mm -hmm. then um, they won't have to fill out that one. So we'll catch everybody at the end, but we want to try the online system first and okay. then go to that one. Okay. <coughs> it's going to be very helpful for our school system. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any other questions or motion? So moved. To approve the yes. Second. section two? Yep. Okay. Uh, sec is there a Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nice have it. Thank you. Okay. Um, then we have one other amendment here. Uh, I don't know, either Irene or Didi, you want to explain what, what we need to do there? Yep. So uh, in your packets, I've included the full um, electronic version of the new policy manual that um, was approved by the school committee, I believe, last May. Um, but at this point in time, now that we have the actual uh, new policy manual, you actually have to vote to rescind all previous versions of the policy manuals. Um, so it's like step two of a two-step process. Um, so that's just something that needs to, that I would respectfully request that the school committee um, complete so that we can post the new version and be done. Okay, motion? Uh, motion to rescind the old policy manual. Second. 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 Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, next item is the athletic subcommittee. So here we have also a, a meeting report. Um, I don't, Amy, were you going to? Bless you. Okay. Thank you. Here. I'm just trying to pull up the schedules here because I have the memorandum. Mm -hmm. um, on Wednesday, August 14th, um, the athletic subcommittee met. Um, we had a discussion and a vote um, regarding the middle school athletic program extension and pilot. We discussed this two-year pilot program at the Watertown Middle School. Um, due to favorability in our athletic revolving account, uh, we would include the middle school athletics in the existing $50 activity fee at the Watertown Middle School. 
this will better meet the needs of all the Watertown Middle School students, athletes, and it will um, it will also um, help out with the high demand for more teams and increase the opportunity for students to participate in the middle school athletics. Um, we will reevaluate this program after two years, which would be necessary for the uh, sustainability of the program. And it was a two to zero motion was passed and approved. Then we had a um, review of fall sports from our athletics director. Um, he reported that registration is now open for all fall sports. Schedules are being completed. Um, a few little sidebar notes, cross country was looking for some more student athletes. Girls soccer added two more coaches and golf was added with the eighth grade waiver this year. And we adjourned. Okay. Um, I don't remember what time. Is there a motion to <laughs> approve the report? So moved. Second. Any other discussion or questions? I had a question. Who sure. is the new soccer girl soccer coach? I don't know the names offhand. Is it like a, a replacement coach or did they? No, they added two. Like they two added two. Coaches? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. I because of numbers? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's I do not know the name. I did sign the form. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if it was a replacement. No, no. Oh. They, they had the numbers to add. So now we have four in total. Yeah, it was, it's intense. That's great. Wow. Oh, yeah. I had one other question. Um, for the middle school pilot, um, this talks about the, the, the fee structure. Are we also um, adding, there was a discussion at one point about adding additional teams. Yes. Right. right. Yeah. And coaches. So, oh, okay. oh, yeah. There's some significant expansion. Yeah. Ryan so, has a very I thought I just didn't, yeah. I wasn't sure of all the details. Okay. Well, let's let's, let's uh, approve the report and then we'll, we'll go okay. into more detail on the, yes. the Sounds proposal. Sounds good. That was my only question. Okay. So okay. After that, okay. That's fine. Right. So, um, is there, we had the motion second. Uh, all in favor of approving the report? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Yes, have it. So, then the motion before us is the one that was actually uh, that Amy read out to recommend the school committee approval of the ex pros expansion uh, to your pilot program. So I don't know whether do you want to speak more to that? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so the, the purpose of this pilot program for two years is to look at various options that we can um, implement to uh, reduce the impact of how many kids we have that want to play middle school sports. So. Um, we are currently basically a no-cut um, sports policy. It's not a policy, but it's a practice that's been around for quite some time. Um, but we're finding that um, in many of our sports, we have 60-plus students that um, want to participate. And when you have that many students, oftentimes um, there's large groups of students who don't see very much playing times in games. Um, so we are not sure if um, we're able to sustain uh, a program that would be like an A team and a B team, which would be competitive teams. So for the first year, what we would like to do is um, expand and have intramural programs. Um, so we would have you know, additional teams in the, the largely enrolled programs um, and determine from that if we have enough true interest in it in that second team to then move into a competitive format in the following year. So the first year is just to see how many kids we actually will have interested in the program. And then ideally the second year we would determine if we wanted to go to an AB system or if we wanted to stick with just um, the competitive team and then the intramural team. Um, so the teams that we're thinking about expanding um, would be the boys and girls soccer program, the girls volleyball program, the boys and girls basketball program, and the boys baseball program. So those are existing teams that we would like to add the intramural teams to. And then last but not least would be um, adding a fall cheerleading team and a winter track team. So those would be new, new sports um, at the middle school level. Um, you know, this is, as, as I've written in the, the memo, um, you know, this is an opportunity for our students in Watertown who may not have ever even played any of these sports um, to get a chance to, to be able to participate and determine if this is something they'd like to pursue, um, which in theory then keeps them engaged in extracurricular activities, you know, all the way potentially through high school. So um, we're very excited about being able to offer these opportunities um, and the, the enrollment in the programs definitely indicates that we think that we could be able to sustain this. Um, but rather than moving forward and charging the full athletic fee of $160, um, we thought for the first two years through the pilot, if we were just to flatten that and just say, if you want to participate in any extracurriculars, um, the $50 fee would cover that. Then we'd be able to assess after two years, um, you know, what is the appropriate level in terms of an athletic fee to sustain those, that number of programs um, moving forward. So um, right. that's the summary of that. Okay, questions? Any other any questions? 
I have just one or two. So the, the 52920 is it primarily costs for additional coaches? It's, uh, yeah, uh, coaches, a, uniforms, you know, okay. getting the teams together, yes. Okay. Um, we're not, the first year it's, you know, since we're not doing the, the um, sorry, <laughs> the transportation, because we're not trying to do two competitive teams, it doesn't include okay. as much transportation except for the two new sports that we're adding. Right. Um, but the second year, we would also probably potentially incur some transportation costs as well. And the, the intramural program, so that, that's not like a, a club where they would play a club from another town. It's more internally. Right, for the first year, the it first would be year. more internally. Um, okay. You know, there might be some opportunities if there's a surrounding community that might want to pick up a couple of games, but it's not organized like the actual competitive middle school sports. Okay. Um, but right now, we don't necessarily envision that, but that doesn't mean that that isn't something that could be explored. And where would a winter track team, where, where would they, would they be in the gym? That's a fantastic question. Yep. Well, you'd use the other facility, the schools that have indoor tracks for your meets, but to practice you run in the hallway yep. for the most part, or outside if weather permits. They wouldn't come over here. We the don't have a track. Yeah. Well, the, we have winter track at the high school, mm -hmm. right? Right, but we don't yes. have an indoor right. track to run actual No, I know, but, but the winter, high school winter we track. Just, yeah, run we around just to the, the building. <laughs> we run around the yeah. building? Yeah. So when we, when we have to think about that when we build a new high school. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a nice yeah. cantilever track would be fantastic. Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Everyone has them now. So. Right, we ran the hallways. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, any other questions? I think it's a great opportunity you not know, to try to, we, we have the favorability, like you said, in the, in the, the budget line. So, you know, try to build up the middle school sports is good. Okay. Um, <coughs> no other questions? Motion to, uh, we're approving basically the, the adjustment in the athletic fee. So it's uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have a motion? There's a motion to adjust the middle school athletic fee. Second. Second. Sorry. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nice nice have it. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda for um, for vote is the proposed calendar for the coming year, coming uh, academic year. So in our packets, uh, this is the same. We presented this earlier. People have had a chance to look at it. We do have five um, months in which there are two meetings scheduled. But the first meeting will be September 9th, October, November, December, et cetera. Um, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions, issues, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nice have it. Thank you. Oh, are we going to, um, is, can this whole thing be posted somewhere in an easy thing so people can see exactly where our, what our meetings are so they can plan ahead if they'd like to attend? Absolutely. Yep. We'll get it. We'll make sure it's posted. Super, thank you. Um, next would be the disposition of uh, surplus property. So we have a uh, couple different items here, a bookshelf, file cabinet, chairs, a uh, lab table, tables, and a whiteboard. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Let's nice have it. Thanks. Then we have approval of minutes. Uh, the minutes, school committee meeting, uh, the minutes of, and I thank Ariel for kind of catching us up here on the minutes. Um, June 17th, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion, problems? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nice. Nope, I have it. Uh, July 8th, school oh, committee meeting. So, so moved. Um, second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. July 22nd. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. Eyes, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. August 14th. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, reports. Curriculum subcommittee. Hi. Uh, Lindsay. I'm up. All right, so. Um, in early July, on uh, Monday the 8th, the curriculum subcommittee met uh, to discuss uh, two major items. Uh, the first one was the uh, draft of the turnaround plan for the Watertown Middle School, and we'll be hearing more about that later in the fall. Is that 
Mm -hmm. True, um, at a school committee meeting. Um, and so we saw a draft of that um, and heard about uh, how it was developed and the teams that were involved um, and how it hits up on uh, four major turnaround practices, which include uh, leadership, um, intentional practice for improving instruction, student-specific supports and instruction to all students, and school culture and climate. Um, and uh, the middle school principal, Donna Martin, uh, talked about some of the strengths in, in that the middle school already has and the things that they're working on uh, for that plan. Um, that has gone out to the Department of Education um, who p reviews it and then possibly offers suggestions in the early fall before it's a final version of that report um, in that plan. Uh, the second item that we discussed was um, the curriculum change uh, for some of the seventh and eighth grade classes in the Watertown Middle School for ELA and Social Studies. Um, uh, Principal Martin and Dr. McGinn has presented some information and rationale um, about the curriculum change. Um, we spent some time talking about the reasons for the change, um, some of the expected outcomes by making the adjustments uh, to the schedule, and um, you know the administration talked about some ownership about a, a rollout that didn't go well, and it was probably you know late in the school year, and, and that was difficult for teachers. Um, at the end of that meeting, we talked about um, wanting to hear more information about. Um, vertical and horizontally alignment aligned to the standards and how teachers are going to be supported in this change. Um, I had linked to the report um, a memo that Dr. McGinnis sent out to the subcommittee um, a couple of weeks later with more of that information, um, which was much appreciated. And um, I think at some point when the subcommittee meets again to discuss other things, we'll get a follow up on how that's going. So. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve the subcommittee report? Sure. Second. Second. Discussion, questions, comments? Thank you for a very detailed report. Sure. Um, I had one minor little, maybe it's a typo. It's possible. At the, <laughs> at the bottom of the first page where it says three of the six clusters for seventh and eighth. Aren't there, there would be four? Oh, yeah, three of the, oh. Oh, is it four of, no, four clusters in seventh and eighth because there's two in each grade level. Right. So I'm not sure what the. So I'm not sure what that breakdown is supposed to four? be. Then is it three of the four? Okay, so it should be three of the three four. Three of the four. Yeah. Okay. Any other other questions or comments? Again, thanks for the follow up. I know that it's an important issue, um, both the turnaround plan and the the ELA social studies material. So mm -hmm. just a question. So the sure. turnaround plan, um, we're going to have a report on that in the fall. Yes. Dr. McGinnis? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're still, I mean, just as an update, I can let you know that the Department of Education is um, currently reviewing the plan yep. and has indicated that they're um, still reviewing the plans and that they were supposed to give us feedback by the end of August. So we're, we're waiting for some feedback from, from the department before it mm -hmm. technically becomes final. So once that's done, then uh -huh. yes, we'll provide more information to the school committee and the larger community as well. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the report? So moved. So moved. Second. Second, any other discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. All right, thank you. Um, next would be the superintendent's goals for 2019-20. So this is a, a draft presentation. It's an opportunity for us to Kind of give feedback, comments back to the superintendent, and then this will be back on our agenda in a couple of weeks for September 9th for a vote. But this is the same pattern that we followed last year. You know, we did the evaluation, uh, so the evaluation of superintendent this summer. Next step is to identify goals for the coming year. So, Dr. Galston. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so I would just like to, to say that um, you'll see throughout the proposed goals <clears throat> some similarities in terms of the overall goals. Um, and I think that that speaks to the fact that um, we are in the midst of a four-year improvement strategy and my goals are tightly aligned with that improvement strategy. And as such, um, many of them have retained uh, very similar uh, goals in terms of my, my own superintendent's goals for this year. Um, that being said, within the key actions, there are some major shifts because as the years progress, um, we certainly are changing things. and. 
I should have different goals to make sure that we're achieving that overall um, mission for the four years of the plan. So I, I'm just gonna go through them and highlight what I would consider to be the, the major shifts or differences, and um, then I'm more than happy to answer any questions or get feedback as I move forward to make these final. Um, so the first goal we have, um, again, this is probably my third year that I've had a goal around fair and effective educator goal setting and evaluation. Um, I think that one of the, the main points in this one is last year I was really focused on the um, goal setting and um, evaluation plans, whereas this year as a team we've discussed the fact that we need to be in classrooms more, so the shift is um, the measurement being uh, teachers being observed at least four times within their educator plan cycles and at least three times a year um, the leadership team will calibrate feedback that is provided to teachers. So we're shifting from the actual goal setting process to the, um, the observation and the feedback that we provide to our educators. So that's one, one of the big shifts. Um, one of the things I want to mention is um, through some feedback that I received from my coordinators, not my, well, our coordinators, sorry, um, was that while I spend time with the principals, um, I don't spend as much time with my coordinators, and therefore this year I am going to uh, make a point of um, shadowing them for you know at least uh, a three hour time period in the year. I mean, there's a lot of coordinators. I would love to be able to do that more, but I'm shooting for just one time for the first year um, and visit classrooms with them and just you know hear more about what they're doing and see what it is that they're seeing within their, their classrooms and just work together to provide feedback for their teachers as well. So that's a, a shift in that one. Um, the, the last, I didn't add this, but I'm going to add this, um, after today's excellent keynote speaker and thinking about um, you know, our 50 ways to um, increase high expectations with our students, um, that is something that we talked about focusing on in our learning walks. So I'm gonna be a little bit more specific around that um, in terms of our, our keynote. So district uh, goal, sorry, the goal two is district improvement, effective communication with the larger school community. Do you want questions as oh, we sorry. go along? Oh, sure. sorry, sure, yes. I'm just asking, or would, would you be, rather? Yeah, that would be good. So if people have questions as we go along, we could raise them, is that, you have questions on the first goal? No, okay. Um, I, I had a quick question. Yes. <clears throat> um, when you do the learning walks with the principals at each of these visits, do the teachers get any feedback if you've been in their room? No. Okay. No, the, the idea isn't to be looking at specific things within a teacher, one particular teacher's mm -hmm. classroom. It's more looking for trends across the building. Um, so it's the idea of having, you know, 25 plus people mm -hmm. spreading out across the building and looking for one particular move or one particular, you mm -hmm. know, point. Interesting, you know, one of the things that we looked at in the past was, um, you know, mastery objectives or learning targets, which, you know, Donna Martin had talked about being the instructional focus at the middle school. Mm -hmm. So you would imagine, we all go out and look to see if we have evidence of lived mm -hmm. objectives, and then we talk about that. We don't talk about teachers, we don't talk about specifics, yeah. it's more about the building in general. Um, the principal then will turn around that afternoon, usually, and provide an email to staff that mm -hmm. just goes over, you know, this is what we saw, this is what we really appreciated. Okay. Um, so that's the follow-up is with the principal? Yep. But are the teachers told prior to that this is non-evaluative? Yes. Okay. Yep. Because it is, I mean, honestly, it's still anxiety producing a lot of the time. Yep. And if there is not given some specific feedback for each educator, I just think it's really important that they're kind of consistently reminded that it's non-evaluative because there's still a pretty significant amount of pressure that goes with being observed in a learning walk. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's appropriate to respond to each staff member who's room. You do not you necessarily, but someone to reach out and say something just because it, regardless of that it might not be individual, it feels that way to the educator who's standing in that room. And there's nothing that could be done in other than individual feedback that I think helps them understand that there isn't something negative that just happened because that is often the perception. If you have a group of people sitting in your room, you want individualized feedback, not a general, everything was fine, or here's the random things we saw. It's really, I just had seven administrators standing in my room and they don't have anything to say about me. Why? And I, so I, I mean, I would love to see us take that next step of maybe dividing and conquering the learning walks and people look for something different, but people, there's some individualized feedback that's given to each teacher, even if it's not big. Even, we saw that you have great posters on your wall and we love the environment you created, or we really appreciated how you posed that one question. But I do think that there's some significant meaning and, and contribution when these learning walks happen, and I've been a part of a number of them, to then take the time and effort to give at least some piece. So I, I will take that up with um, 
with our staff and uh, explore that and see if that's something that they're open to because um, at this point it's been pretty clear that they we've been asked not to provide feedback so we will work through that um, I you know it's hard and, and, the, and I guess the difficulty lies in the fact that you know in the evaluation system you have a primary and a secondary evaluator and um, and I get it if people are very understanding of the fact that this isn't feedback that's used in an evaluative me you know measure then that's one thing, but right now it is that the primary and the secondary, are the ones that are the only ones that are allowed to provide feedback. So we're gonna, we can, I can bring that up and see how that goes. And I, I get where you're, I hear what you're saying completely. Just something that needs to be talked about as a larger. But wouldn't the primary and secondary pretty much always be at those learning walks? They wouldn't be in the rooms. No, okay. Think so about it. You've got 25 people. I mean, oftentimes the people that come in aren't your evaluators at all. They might not even be in your buildings. I mean, it could be you know high school. Well, right. Coordinators right. come in. We like to actually do that i mean the whole point of it is for, Hoping for that. you know <laughs> vertical levels to be able to see what's happening within the classrooms um so you know i i, I think there's probably a, a, a happy medium somewhere in the middle yeah. that um validates what people see but you know, also doesn't you know go into the the area of evaluation because it's not meant to be evaluative at all yeah that's more like, yeah, like sometimes you get the awesome feedback from nias that's anonymous and it doesn't have any major pedagogical Im you know impact on you but you're like they noticed something and if they saw that in my room and that felt good yep i, think I will fun. i will bring that up with staff and see if that's something that they are looking for and wanting and if it is then we'll figure something out but if it isn't then we'll continue as, as what we're doing thank you um they are definitely appreciative of the feedback at the end they they yeah. really want to wait to yeah. hear what you know the general things that we're seeing yeah for sure i just had a question yeah. you, you mentioned that you were going to add can you just talk about what you were going to add <laughs> to the learning you, you said you were going to add something to that yeah because it just didn't so today in, in the keynote speech, um, we, we were presented with basically 50 ideas for increasing you know, expectations in oh. classrooms. Um, so afterwards in a meeting that we had um, for the leadership team, we talked about, well, how do we, how do we live this you know, moving forward? So um, instead of just using our, our eight focal areas for evaluation, you know, we would love since the whole staff was provided this um, to like, as we just talked about, let people know that you know, we're going to be looking to see if, you know, we see any evidence of the 50 practices in, in, in our days great. when we're doing our learning walks. That's great. Thanks. Yep. Do you want me to keep yeah, going? Yeah, yeah, keep going. <laughs> keep going. It's a dramatic yes. pause. <laughs> yep. Um, so goal two, uh, effective communication with the larger school community. Um, so increasing opportunities for students, teachers, and families, and community members to provide feedback and to contribute to decision making. Um, so I think that this, the shift in this one for me is really <coughs> focusing on two-way communication, um, whether it be through the, the coffee hours or um, going into, I've already, you know, talked to some of the PTOs about being present at PTO meetings. Um, you know, just being more available to larger groups of people to get feedback from um, parents and community members, I think, is is the shift that I'm going to be focused on in this one. Um, and then the big, the the number five was the one that we talked about um, at the school committee retreat around um, determining a culture and climate survey that we would administer to our um, parents, teachers, students, um, community members, and administrators um, on a biannual basis to gather feedback around their perceptions of being in the um, Watertown Public Schools. So. This year will be the year um, to figure out what that instrument's going to be, and then we'll be able to determine how best to use that to inform some of the decisions that we make um, in the coming years. So that's a shift that is in that one. Can I ask a question? Yep. So we're going to decide on the tool this this fall, and then is it going? Is this will the survey go out in the spring? I think that that would be best. Um, you know, it, it's. I mean, we've talked about. Mm -hmm. The, the fact that we've done the Panorama survey now, you know, two years in a row, but it really was really focused on social emotional learning, yeah. especially at the elementary level. Right. Um, and we got excellent information from that to guide us to help make decisions with that. Mm -hmm. But as was brought up by the school committee, I think the idea of, of a broader culture and climate survey is, is important. Um, you know, it's interesting because we, we got our vocal um, survey results, which is the, the survey that students take at the end of MCAS. Mm -hmm. Probably not the best time to ask students great questions, but... Um, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're tired. Um, so I think the timing, but it's interesting to see that data. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it does talk about 
personal relationship building and having teachers that they believe that um, they can trust. And um, I mean, we can go over that once it's public, but um, I think that it's important to, to have that data just to help us moving forward. And I think timing is gonna be important because again, I don't think doing it right in the spring when everybody's already taking assessments is probably the best thing, but we'll, we'll figure out okay. when. Great, thank you. I would just add to just a, a comment. I think I, I think the survey is great. We've talked about that for uh, some time, and I think to get that in place would be really good. The other comment I would make is number three: the annual report mm -hmm. is also something we've talked about, and uh, is is the same as the with the school committee has a goal along with that. So that's a kind of shared activity, if you will. Yes. Yeah. Any okay. other comments on that one? So next one. So goal three, again, is a, um, a continuation from last year. This is the Building for the Future Elementary and High School project. Um, you know, I think that the idea is that as the superintendent, I represent the Watertown Public Schools in the planning process for the building projects um, and trying to facilitate clear lines of communication regarding the progress of the building projects um, via various methods. I think for me, you know, Right now, number three is, I mean, numbers one, two, and four are, you know, basically continuations of what I had previously done, but it's still something that has to be continued. But number three is the big shift um, in the sense of, you know, we are moving into construction. So that adds a whole nother level of ensuring that um, our, our affected school populations um, are aware of, you know, changes in traffic patterns or um, parking spaces and, you know, other issues that are going to <laughs> soon impacts not just our teachers absolutely you know that's something we do as a leadership team um, but the community at large so um, I think in the spring that's going to be a major shift in terms of what my role is um, in that project on, on number two along with the, I think the SBC you mean their communications team right? the school building committee yeah oh jeez but, yes. but the, so the, my, my, into professor mode. <laughs> my other comment, Bo, though, you know, write an update after each yep. SBC meeting. You haven't done that, have you? No. Okay. No, that's new, yes. So you're proposing to do that? Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate um, what you are doing with the school committee updates, and I think that that's something that we could move into after um, school building committee meetings. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have to be too detailed, but I think having some information that mm -hmm. just reviews what we've done in that meeting is... is going to be very beneficial as we start to get very yeah. into yeah. the yeah. the projects links to the presentations because I know sometimes it can be hard kind of digging through and finding what the presentation this is what meetings like that'd be really helpful yep um, can I ask you a question about that um, on that particular one as the projects kind of moving forward so if it might be helpful to um, kind of title a section each section of the communication it's like oh this is really important for parents of kids mm -hmm. that go to the school, this couple points are really important for people who live in the neighborhood just because sometimes I feel like there's so many people in different parts of our community that are involved with the project and interested in it that it's hard for them to get through even a one page update when it's like, oh, this is just design updates and changes that were relevant, but this is how my child is going to be moved around or this is where the neighborhood has to park mm -hmm. now. And so maybe like having it just staggered a bit based on potential most interested audience to help people find or find the most use of that update possibly because there should be a lot of interested different interests in in those updates i think so moving on goal four mm -hmm. is around equity um, systems and structures that ensure equity so the overarching goal is to engage all WPS faculty and staff in embracing anti-bias and inclusive practices that promote equity and ensure all students feel valued and supported in their learning. Um, that's a direct lift from the district improvement strategy. Um, this is a, an addition this year. This is last year I had six goals, this year I have seven. Um, I think that our work as, um, on our, for equity is front and center. Um, after a year of you know, having a little bit of a um, transition from the RIDES project, um, we are now fully ready to move forward. We have excellent <coughs> PD coming on Thursday, can't wait. But the point is, is that to me, this is once again essential for um, this year in terms of my goals. Um, two, two big, or two things I wanna highlight. I mean, these are all very important, but um, numbers four and five. Um, one of the things that, that I'm doing as part of the new superintendent's induction program, it's my final year in that, um, is we're partnering with the Education Resources, Resource Strategies, they're known as ERS. Um, they're going to do a deep dive um, equity um, 
just a, a look at our, our institutional practices. Um, so that's something that I think is gonna help us to really focus our attention in terms of where we find um, either bias or, or inequity in our structures in the school system. Um, and then number five is, uh, oh, I'm not gonna say it because it's big exciting. Mm -hmm. And we have gifts that are wrapped up for all faculty members on Thursday and it has to do with this excellent thing that we're gonna do, which is a book study. Um, mm -hmm. So shh, don't tell anyone. Luckily, this is not live. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> it, it's a. Actually, I, I think it is live. Is it? I thought it wasn't live tonight. I don't know. You is give it, it away either way. So okay, give it away. Good. So <laughs> fabulous. Um, culturally responsive teaching in the brain is a. Um, is a, it's a it's a, an amazing book that really is um, easy to read, easy to understand, and helps all of us to figure out ways and strategies to ensure that all of our students are are successful in our classrooms. Um, being very attuned to um, you know what each student needs in order to be successful. So we're very excited about how we're gonna do that um, as a staff across um, the entire year. So those are the two highlights in that one. Should we read the book too? Yes. It's I, a great book. I was gonna say. Well, Lindsay and I will chime in. I, I think wanted, everybody's reading it I wanted it right to now. say that I, I bought it and read it this summer and it's one of the best yeah. reads. It's um, got really easy to understand science research about how the brain works in um, really actionable things that relate to any educator at any yeah at K twelve like that's one of the uh, even it probably above. I mean it's really about also human interaction which yeah is one it was of the things it I was a fantastic book yeah okay. that's a great book okay definitely pick it up <laughs> okay definitely on my reading list. Um, so <laughs> goal f any question any other questions goal five narrowing the achievement gap. Um, this is a little bit of a shift again. Um, I just want to make sure people know this was our my goal last year. But if you remember, um, one of the things that we weren't able to achieve as a district was really looking at our, our tiered multi-tiered system of support. So we re, um, reorganized that goal as a, in the district improvement strategy, really focusing on um, tier one instruction uh, for literacy at the elementary level and creating the RTI system um, at the elementary level for for especially with literacy. Um, the other thing major in this that you know has to be accomplished, and that's why I think it's so important that I articulate it in the goal, is to uh, update the dis district curriculum accommodation plan, otherwise known as the DCAP. Um, it hasn't been updated since we think 2011. Um, it's certainly time to do so, and that will be done by the um, hopefully by the end of the fall. Um, so those are the the key actions on that one. Uh, one question: So the achievement gap between what groups? How are we defining that? The high needs and other and so, know, overall, or what's the so two? I think, and, and this is something that um, you know, with the new accountability system, I mean, there's there's two ways to look at that, and I think high needs is one, mm -hmm. um, but I think the second metric that we're now using, which is the lowest 25 percent performing students, is the other. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think when we get that result, we'll see exactly where we are, and then we'll be able to, to see what five percent is going to look like moving forward. Yeah. Um, but I would drive that right from the accountability accountability system. Um, and I, I think it's, it is good to, to acknowledge that, that bottom 25% as being, it doesn't, it's, it's, they're across subgroups. So, mm -hmm. and some kids aren't in subgroups. It's just a matter of how do we help all of our students be successful? So that's what I would use. Okay, I would, just, I would say, suggest defining that mm -hmm. in some fashion there. Um, the other comment I had was in, under benchmarks, the second bullet. Is prevent information at school committee regarding achievement gap as it relates to the district's accountability set. Is there a timing for that? A when that would happen? Uh, that would be in October, more than likely. Okay, so maybe add uh, a, a, a date. date. Yep, probably in benchmarks. Right? Yeah, but, but, but there's no specific uh, date, which technically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can I make just one quick comment about the, the goals? Are right. Yep. Um, one thing just about the the way that the goal is worded and I know the achievement gap is a term that's used a, a lot it's just it, it when you talk about narrowing achievement gap it it in some ways it makes it sound like you're trying to you're trying to make the results of what you're doing more narrow after the fact of what we've been doing and and I almost feel like if if we're kind of, like all of these things are, are are proactive step to increase achievement of groups that are underperforming um, in their final results. And so I don't really know that the, it just, it reads a little bit deficit mindset about mm. what kids are doing, but also like it, I kind of feel like it's, when you say you want to narrow the achievement gap, it's like looking at the end product and trying to make that result better 
but all these things are talking about things we're going to do along the way mm -hmm. to increase achievement for our lower performing students. And so I'm just kind of wondering if there's any tweak to the language to kind of make it sound like these are actionable things we're doing right now to improve the results at the end, and that will be the evidence that we've done these things. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good. I will rework that. Okay. Any other comments on that? Okay. Goal six. Uh, so goal six is the increased student achievement for all students in the Watertown Public Schools. Um, this one is ensuring the curriculum is articulated in line to standards pre-K to 12 and that teachers are provided with the necessary resources and supports to successfully deliver the curriculum. Um, so this is a shift. Uh, again, this is a rewording of that goal um, in terms of increasing student achievement. And for, for this year, um, it's, and you know, I, I was talking to Dr. McGinnis earlier, basically this is, is our goal together and primarily it's her goal, but I think that this is important again for it to be in my goals and to be something that we focus on, um, which is that, you know, creating that multi-year curriculum alignment, revision and development plan, um, conducting that K-12 math curriculum review, um, est establishing our instructional leadership teams at the elementary level, um, continuing the work of the, it doesn't say, oh, it does, the middle school turnaround um, plan and um, that, that coaching support. So um, really we, we are, I can't wait till the fall to, share with you some of the, the um, results that we're seeing, but um, you know, now that we're K to eight with our coaching, it's, it's important because that's how we're going to ensure that the, the written curriculum is the lived curriculum. So um, that's our focus for this year. Yeah. Oh, yes. I have a question on this one. Yes. Yep. Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm just concerned with how you phrased your goal because when, as soon as you say all students, you've set yourself up to fail, not because we don't want to do best for all students, but I, I think if you're talking about a SMART goal, which has to be measurable, mm -hmm. you might not see increased achievement for all students. I don't even think that's a fair or realistic goal to set because I just don't, one, we're gonna lose kids, there's churn, there's all this other stuff, but the other aspect of that is, of course, that that is just, it's not realistic in any given year to think that you're going to hit every student. So I guess my concern is that like having written SMART goals the pushback to that would be like, is that really what you're trying? Are you really trying to get every single student? In which case, you can't necessarily meet that goal or provide evidence of meeting that goal. That that's I just I don't see how you can achieve this goal in a measurable way. It's worded uh, it's, it's, but aspirational. It is. Yeah, yeah, no, it yeah. absolutely it's absolutely I mean, aspirational. But we're talking about. A it's measurable not a whole goal. Right, yes. right, right, yeah. right. This I, is this is no child left behind here. So. Exactly. So Honest. I mean that. It, all it, students will be proficient by 2014. So, right. yeah. I mean, the point I yeah I would say just right. drop the word all. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think the but it's supposed to be measurable. So 97. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Like the point so is yeah. my counter. Just my my counter thought on that one is even this morning hearing John Safier speak, mm -hmm. um, you know, he kind of challenged us to really try to do this for all students. I mean, I think it was a pretty clear, he said, it will be a miracle district when, you know, but if you commit and you stay the course, then it is something that we should aspire to. I mean, that's basically his words. So, I, you know, it's, and I, I get it, I'm, I'm fine. And I, I understand that, that it would be hard to necessarily achieve that, but um, we tell our teachers, this is, and, and we can debate this, because I think it's up for um, a lot of debate, but we tell our teachers that it's more important to set a stretch goal that is, you know, probably not something that you might achieve, but to see the the what you've put in place to get there, and to see the rigor of that work, and even if you don't achieve it, it's moving us forward. Um, so I, but I think you're right. I mean, this is pretty all, and I, I get the the intonation of it being, you know. Well, I, I yeah, I mean, I understand that point, and I, I tend to uh, to agree with Lily. Although I would say, if you look at the benchmark. You know the, ben the the benchmark, which is what's really going to be well, measured. Right. That, that's measurable. That's like, measurable. That's, saying, is that that's measurable. So in in a sense, the goal becomes aspirational. The benchmark has the has the measurement to it. So I mean, there is that kind of compromise that you're yeah. doing there, which I mean, that's you know. Well, well, also, well, I guess the other thing is, what is achievement? Also, always comes up because mm -hmm. we have kids who maybe aren't coming every day, and they're putting in all these amazing programs now, you know, to help kids transition and and how and reduce tardiness and do all of that. That's a significant student achievement, but that isn't what we're seeing on the, like, I guess, I guess I just, I don't see how this all <coughs> students, 
achieving is, is something that is necessarily easy to understand what that even means. Yep. I'd, I'd rather have you keep the all in there and keep, the, the, the goal is really about curriculum alignment as, as you articulated in the second sentence. So it sounds to me that student achievement is the goal and curriculum al alignment is how you're going to, what your focus is gonna be for, in terms of student achievement for this year. Yep. Um, so and I, I, I agree that it is aspirational, but I, I wouldn't wanna take it out. That doesn't feel right to me either. Yeah. Well, the benchmarks are, are both. The benchmarks have, have kind of MCAS scores in them, but also have the curriculum alignment component. So, you know, I think it's fine. You know, yeah, what, whatever you want to do yeah. is fine. It's Let me think about it because I, I um, because Kendra, Kendra is correct that the ensuring the curriculum, I mean, it's kind of the overarching, you know, header. I mean, it's not increased student achievement. It could just be that. I mean, it could it just, just, that's what we're trying to do is increase student achievement and how you define it. I mean, that's something that we're going to talk about with the annual plan is, um, you know, it's student success when all is said and done, and you measure that in, in myriad ways. It's not just on MCAS, but um, so let me, let me think about that overarching header. Um, but what we're doing is really looking at the articulated curriculum and the necessary supports to ensure that teachers are um, able to deliver that curriculum. So that's, those are the two focus areas for that. Okay. And then just the goal seven, I hate to say it, is not really any different, but again, this is the one to me that if it's not one of my goals, then you know, this is the, the age old issue with strategies that you know, if you don't keep them in the forefront, then it becomes a plan that sits on a shelf. So I'd like to keep this forever in here um, and every year be able to say, this is what we did this year. Um, this is what we achieved in our district improvement strategy. So um, that's goal seven. Okay. My one question on goal seven in terms of the, the key actions, number two, is um, embed, uh, prepare an end of the year analysis for the community that describes the district's progress. Yep. Is that the annual report? Yes. So oh. the same one that referred to earlier. Yep. Right, so. Um, Do you want me to write the annual report? On yeah, that? I would say, but it's not really in the, well, it's an end of the year analysis, but we're talking about having it you know, be available in the fall. So I, I would just, you want to make it the same as the other report? Yeah. So yes. That's what I assumed it was, but just I would use the same language. The annual report. Can change that, I guess. What's that? I can change that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Anything else? Other questions? Just a one quick comment. Sure. Um, I really like the the tweak to some goals that we've been working on for a few years, and I think it's really important to keep the strategy one in here. Um, I would just want us to think as a as a whole team that as year after year goes on that you don't keep adding one. Yes. It just, it, it get, it'll get long and I think I don't want us to end up with an undoable mm -hmm. amount and like, you know, we talked about that it's measurable and there's hope can be accomplished and focused. So um, I think these are all really good. Um, I just would want us to not grow by one every year. That's all. Yes. I will try not to do that. <laughs> okay. So this will come back to us at the next meeting to, to vote on. And in that context, a couple of things that we also will look into. Um, I think I, Didi and I have been looking into this, although we haven't resolved it quite yet, that apparently the state has um, revised the uh, rubrics a little bit for the superintendent evaluation. They've, you know, they've offered it as a pilot. It's not clear that there's a whole lot of change to it, mm -hmm. but we'll look at that and see. Because, because the one thing, if you remember, that we didn't do um, this past time was narrow that down, those, those state indicators mm -hmm. as to which ones we were going to focus on. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were, you know, Dorothy had recommended that we do that, but we didn't. Uh, so we should revisit that. And then the other thing that I think we'll revisit when we talk about this is whether the, we do the evaluation maybe in the fall as opposed to the mm -hmm. summer. I mean, we brought that up before, yeah, I like to kind of waiting it. because then that's when the data will yeah, be available. Data. That makes so much more sense. And for particularly these numbers uh, five and six, right. yeah. we won't have the data for those, which is the same mm -hmm. thing that happened this year. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, all right. Thank you very much. So we'll, again, we'll come back to that um, at the next meeting. Next item is the. The school committee goals for 2019-20, and again, this is a discussion. We'll come back to it in September uh, for a vote. And we had we ended up with four goals from the retreat that we had that we shared with the 
administration uh, several weeks ago, and then people put wrote out a little bit more about those, and then uh, you have the four of those. Two were in the packet, and two came a little bit later. Um, so maybe if each person wants to say a few words about them that drafted those, and people can make any comments they want before we put a final version together for the vote. So the first one was the school committee liaisons, and I think that, uh, Lily, you worked on that one? I that was Lindsay. Oh, Lindsay, I'm sorry, Lindsay worked on that one. Um, do you want me to read it? Uh, yeah, just explain it. If, yeah, it's fairly okay. short if you want. Um, yeah, sure, so we talked about um, wanting to increase um, the school committee presence in each of the school communities for Watertown. Uh, in the process we discussed for doing that was um, assigning school liaisons, which um, we discussed how there's other school communities that use that practice to sort of have um, a little bit more personal contact with the school communities. Um, and so uh, we put John, um, we also decided to uh, be assigned to a school where um, our children do not attend on purpose to sort of spread ourselves out and sort of learn more about other communities that are not where our children are. Um, so John was at uh, Conniff, Kendra at Lowell, uh, myself at Hosmer, Lily for the high school, and Amy with the middle school. Um, and I put together uh, five possible action steps, and we can discuss this. I was kind of going off for a conversation from the retreat um, that each liaison will communicate with the principal of their school uh, monthly via email to figure out which events are coming up and information to be helpful to share with the school committee, um, coordinate with the PTO of their school and attend at least two meetings, um, attend at least one community or academic event at their school, um, attend one site council meeting at their school and share uh, their school specific expertise with the school committee when the school is being showcased in one of our meetings. So, so I just so. I was going to add one thing. Yeah. Um, I, I know we had this discussion about picking different schools. I have th three kids now in two schools, so I would like to take a school that one of my kids is in <laughs> because <laughs> I have a lot of PTO meetings to go to. We can we can make some we can make some. So swaps. if we can make some swaps, that'd be great. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, we we had some discussion about this mm -hmm. at the. At the retreat, and yep. I mean, I think there's some variation of opinion about it. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I, you know, personally, I would say that if if someone would prefer not to be a liaison at a school where they have a child, that's fine. But and, and they can choose that. But mm -hmm. you know, again, I'm I kind of share your opinion. I'm I'm I only have a child at one school, so I but I, at one point I did have them at two schools, and under those circumstances. To have a third school as a liaison, we have an easy maneuverability here, though. Yeah, because I was saying, we only and I put in switch. five people because we didn't yeah. know who the remain, and we didn't want to include Mark. So we do have movability here. Somebody can pair up on either WMS or WHS yeah. because those are two larger schools anyway, and it would make sense to have two people on at least one of them. And then our new member after the election could easily take over. Spot. Yeah, I know we can swap offline, but I just wanted to yeah. throw that I in mean, there. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that I don't think there's a conflict of interest. I think it's more just people. We put in who was yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I have a suggestion <laughs> for, <laughs> for for a number six that we could add to the list here, okay. um, which I think is kind of it's, it's somewhat the flip side of five, is to uh, share. Uh, uh, this is the way I wrote it: share school committee related information and happenings with the parent and school community? Sure, so um, I drafted out uh, this goal, and I, I kind of struggle a little bit in terms of timing, and, and I think I need to reach out to Dr. McGinnis a little bit about the learning walks. So we, maybe we can coordinate when the different schools are gonna be doing their learning walks and then their showcases, and then put that all together to see what months fit for which school. So I didn't do the assignments of schools or anything like that. I thought especially when you're drafting SMART goals with a team, generally you have like a team meeting and you come up with a concept and then you talk about it. So I kind of came up with our idea. Are you talking is, about what, annual goal? Well, I think, oh, sorry, am I, I already off? I'm on, so sorry. I, I haven't adding been. number six. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm a little uh, I'm still I'm on the first one. <laughs> we'll be there soon. I'm still on John's, the John's not that quick. <laughs> no, I was just adding. <laughs> still on one. Could you say it again, though, because I was... Okay. Looking yeah, I, the, I'm sorry. Like, I was I, looking for the non-PDF when you read today. that, and I wanted to just... Well, I can... I, yeah, I, I, I said uh, I to share school committee-related <laughs> information <laughs> and happenings with the parent and school community. Yeah. It's just about communicating both it, ways. Yeah, it's just communicating <laughs> both ways. Yeah, you can, you can combine it in five in some sort of way. Yeah, too, yeah. yeah, that's fine. But to me, that's kind of the essence of what this role is all about, to be yeah. honest. It's Makes just sense. being that two-way communication person. And then, and then when we have our new member, we'll incorporate <laughs> him into this process. So. 
yeah. when the election is held. Yeah. Can we go on to two? Yeah, but okay. do, so do, do we want to switch these assignments or people want to think about let's this? Let's think about it. And okay, let's think about it yep. and then we'll finalize those when we get mm -hmm. to uh, That'd be great. Sure. the next meeting. Okay, um, so number two is the school committee Then the meeting. school committee discussed um, about having the meetings in, um, having five of our meetings throughout the school year, either in the particular school or having them held at town hall that would focus on that particular school. Um, the goal for this would be to increase the community engagement and to provide some um, transparency between the school committee and of course the community, but it would also increase um, knowledge um, and showcase the workings and the accomplishments of each of those schools to the community. Um, the first thing we would need to do is probably design a survey to figure out what um, would be more beneficial is to have them at town hall in the town hall chambers and invite that school to the town hall or have the meetings actually in that school itself. Um, so we will need to partner with the administration to create this um, survey and distribute it. And then we can use the results of that survey to set up the meetings um, that will be held throughout the school year and um, keep track of the number of people that come and set the benchmarks for future goal making around these. Okay. I, I don't remember talking about a survey, that, but maybe we did. I think we, we um, talked about figuring out which would work better to, to go to the school right. or to come right. have them. So how else are you going to figure out which to do? Well, if you're just, trying to increase turnout. If we, that, just, we just do it and, 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 see, see, it and see how it works. So That's we're going to decide whether it's at town hall or at the school? I mean, I think we've, we've seen there's a long history of poor attendance at town hall right. meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't think it would hurt it, to, to go to the school. No offense. I would David, agree, but no the, whole, the whole thing about this was. <laughs> yeah. Right, and here right. we are at the high school. Right. Yeah. Right, but we had pushback about that from our last meeting about maybe not doing that. So I think it, I, I think we can just revise the goal. If we're committed to just doing it in town hall and bringing the schools in, we should revise the goal to match that, but that isn't what we had discussed before. I, I mean, I, I know what John's saying about a, a survey. I think that surveys are, it's, it's going to be hard to get that out and get a response. Yeah. That's so we just pick. I yeah, think I think it's fine if we just pick, but yeah. I do think that okay. yeah. we should be consistent with all the schools. Yeah. So if we're going to do it in town hall for one school, we should do it for all the schools. And if we're right. going to do it in right. the schools, we should do it for all the schools. So it's, no, it's I, one or the other. What, what I mentioned, which I thought was the opportunity, would be because we have five months where we have a second meeting, mm -hmm. the second meeting becomes the meeting in the school. Yeah, okay. uh, that's And the right. superintendent mentioned that as a good strategy. So, you know, our first meeting is always in town hall every month. The first meeting is in town hall. And then when those second, second meetings, meeting. those would be at in the, the schools, schools, at the schools. I mean, to me, to, I think it's worth trying. And if it doesn't yeah. work, it doesn't work. And okay. then, and we can then just revise know. the goal. No, that's totally yeah. fine. But that, yeah. that is not what we had discussed. Okay. So this okay. was reflective of the discussion. I think we, we had. hadn't decided. Yeah, we hadn't made that decision. OK. So well, we, that's an easy fix. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, do, is, do people feel comfortable doing yes, that? Yes, I think that, that makes sure. sense. Mm. Yeah. So I think the idea would be um, that that at that when we're at that school there would be some uh, you know feature about the school uh, but then we also have business we have other business that we'll take care of right. we'll so do. the first meeting would be in october at some school that's right that's okay right. and i guess i would leave it the to 21st. the superintendent working with the principals to put the order together yes yeah. You know, you figure out what works. I'll put on the okay. agenda for my next admin council meeting. <laughs> See who wants to go. I mean, I, my sense was there's positive feedback from yeah. principals about doing this. I think it's great. Yeah. Okay. And then I would be in touch with the superintendent of when to schedule, uh, to how to set that up. She'll do I don't want to drop yeah, it all on her, but. No, she'll, no, she'll, she'll, she'll talk. Yeah. She just needs to talk to and the principal. And who's ready yes. when, you know, all different right. people. You're on then. But I think. <laughs> I'm going to cross this off my list. That's <laughs> 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 my first no of the year. <laughs> but, but I think, I do think we need to do, as you said in the last paragraph, you know, count the number of attendees, et cetera, yeah, yeah. you know, count yeah, data. But the whole point is data. So October, yeah. January, in March, we have. Yeah. In May. Yep. June. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Well, we'll vote. We'll give a final vote to it in. Um, Great. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say that the, the only concern about that would be that final June day. Right. 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 That would be a very challenging, I think. Unless we did that, saved it for the high school, because they seem to have a lot of. Could, uh, I don't know. Dee Dee and her. Yeah. I guess just figure out if that, if anybody would take yep. that June day, if that would work, and if not, then we should rethink, and we can figure something else out. Well, we could flip June. 
we could flip them. Right. That, that, exactly. So I'm just I just yep. the end of June would be a tough time. Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, and then number three. Uh, so this yeah, was this one was the idea of you know getting information out and providing more school committee developed and produced information to disseminate um, and to gather feedback um, from the town. Um, our idea was to have every member of the school committee or maybe in teams or pairs um, come up with at least one article or some form, I think, of material um, to disseminate throughout the school year. Um, the idea is that we would have them published in local publications, maybe social media, other mediums as determined. Um, I know Eileen talked about the cable show that we have going on that might be another good avenue that we could use um, and so the idea was that the each member of the school committee um, inclusive of the school committee itself as well as the team members inclu inclusive of Dr. Galdston and any members of the administration as needed um, will contribute to an article during the school year um, I think our, our goal would be that um, we will have one article kind of per month of the school year um, getting produced and developed and um, I kind of chatted briefly with Charlie and other things like that, and I, basically if we get something in by the 21st of the month, it will run that month for sure. Usually it'll run the same day, but you can't promise that. Um, and yeah, basically um, the idea is just to get out as much information as possible. I think you know, in order to do this well, we do have to have a larger team discussion about what these articles would comprise of. Um, you know, if we want to kind of develop a system of this where maybe every August we do a specific kind of back to school article, at the end we do a recap type of a thing. Um, but this gives some flexibility for people to also take on interest areas and to, and to highlight things that are incredibly successful, um, you know, and new programs and new initiatives. Um, and again, I definitely, I do think we need to get some information to figure out where people are going to get their information from and target that. But that can be a before survey, an after survey, and in the middle survey. But I do think we need to figure out where um, the members of the WPS and, and the Watertown community as a whole are getting their information and then find a way to get it to them as much as possible. OK. Questions? The only thing I would be wary about is to be redundant with all the other yeah. articles and yeah. things that are being posted already. I know that the Watertown Splash now is being um, brought into all of the schools, so we just have to be careful of what oh, yeah, yeah. is being published in that. Um, and then, of course, of Charlie's and, of course, of the other you know, PTOs and site councils and all the stuff that they're... Not that it's bad to be redundant, but like Lily said, kind of maybe figure out where we're going to get our information and maybe focus on something for the year in particular? I don't know if we stay in the same track. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think that if if we're picking a month or something, we'd want to try to line up with what's happening. something specific that's happening with school committee or with the buildings, if it's yeah. one of our membership there, or if it's a big, huge event that goes on in the district that everyone gets really excited about, you know, so being really specific about it. Um, but Amy, I have a question. What's Watertown Splash? It's oh, the it's paper. Right. The, the school papers. School oh, papers were, okay, great. <laughs> you didn't see the last one I was on the cover. I saw. Thanks. We, we had like three. Sorry, I appreciate that. <laughs> I was just I'll asking for the good of the public. Like, like, is the, video is like the splash so so cumulative of all the papers? Yes, I mean, like all of them together. They did they're, one they're, paper at the end. Oh. At the end. So the elementary school got a, a, a volume or a, an edition for elementary, and then the middle school got their own, and then the high school got their own. So but it would be like the, highlighted for just those elementary. But during, is that was the final edition. During yes. the year, each of them have separate ones? Well, elementary, middle, and high school. Elementary but I think does it, it just together. recently was brought to the elementary, uh, to yeah. the Hosmer, yeah. and to yeah. the Lowell. Yeah, yeah, this, this past year. year. Yeah. 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 It only was at the Cunniff for a long yeah. time. In, okay. terms of, in terms of content, I've done some of these articles in the past, and they can be as simple as, you know, you want to highlight the robotics program. Mm -hmm. You want to highlight yeah. the, you know, the growing theater program. There's things that we know about that just aren't as well known in the community that are really amazing and wonderful and exciting that are just a good story to tell. That right. Those are the kind of stories. So it doesn't have to be school committee related. It can really, really be things you're interested in. I always Human gone interest. through the yeah. superintendent and then gone through the principals and then they find the right person for me to talk to, maybe yeah. do an interview. So yeah. um, anyways, that's just a general overview of how we could do it. Mm -hmm. I guess my question is kind of how, you're talking about a calendar, so what, what's that going to look like? How's that going to get put together? Oh. It's just a Google calendar and we can just pick it up. Right, we basically we would all, 
or, or we could all discuss it and say, you know, for instance, like, I know September is usually not a great month for me to have to pick up more things because that's a busy month for me, whereas I tend to be a little bit slower in February. So, you know? so will we'll you, if you're going to take the lead on this, would you produce a calendar? I can. And then people would sign up for it? I mean, I think what would, what would be better would be if people say, I know that I have flexibility on these months. Yep. And then pe put people in. I feel like if I just randomly assign them, yeah. Yeah, no, that I, doesn't work. Right. I don't think right, that. Right, right. Okay. I can make the calendar. I can do all of that. But if people just email me what works best for them, mm -hmm. I can also come up with what would probably work best yeah. okay. for the overall. Um, Lily, you could also just make it like a, a Google shared Doc. Google Doc that has a table of the months and it has name and topic it and it's just all blank. And if you yeah. fill in your name, you should fill in a topic at some point too. Yeah. Yeah. My only concern with that is that if there's multiple people wanting similar months, that might be more yeah. well, I'm sure we'll be able to work it we out. We can arm wrestle for it. That'd be good. I don't care. Okay. Can I make a suggestion, which is that you think of these articles, so that you're not doing the redundant thing. You, these articles are not news. They're features. Mm -hmm. So, which yeah. somewhat reflects how Kendra was phrasing it. So you're not thinking that you're going to tell them these things are happening on this date. You're not giving them news of hirings and comings and go you're yeah. featuring something more like what you might get in an article, for example, in a New York Times Sunday magazine, that sort of thing. Yep. And I think in that regard, then, they're less, less likely to be something that everybody already knows. Yep. The other thing is, if you end up with two articles in a month, so what? Mm -hmm. These are just puff pieces. It's fine. Yeah. Right. Okay, sounds good. Um, so we'll come back and put that on the, talk about it a little bit more the next time, but we'll take action then. And then the last one is the, the annual report, which alluded to before, and that's something Didi and I sat down to talk about. And the administration is, gonna, is moving forward with this, but it's something that, that I've talked about with her. I think Kendra has actually talked about it quite a bit with her. And so to me, it, it, it makes sense for this to be a, a joint effort, although I think a lot of the work will come from actually uh, staff, administrators, principals, et cetera. They're all going to make contributions to this report. I think what we have to do, and, and Didi and I will sit down and, and give some more detail, is you know, we have a, a sample of a table of contents here, but we need to flesh that out more, and we'll, we'll do that. Um, but the idea is that this would be something that would come out uh, no, by, you know, we're saying November 15th. Um, you know, uh, after the test, you know, MCAS, right. et cetera, is available. So, and again, it, as it says at the top, it includes key accomplishments and activities each year, um, as well as the accomplishments and activities that meet annual goals in the district improvement strategy. And it provides one document as a presentation of key activities and accomplishments. It kind of facilitates tracking over time and comparison to other communities. Uh, something kind of a joint effort of the school committee and the superintendent to do it, as I said, in the fall. And then you know, I think the primary audience is really broad to the general community. And then some of it could be edited down for the annual yeah. town report, which is a requirement anyway. So I think it would be available <laughs> certainly electronically, and then we have to decide to what level it would be hard copy available, but, uh, but certainly electronically. I think the one question I had, and Didi and I can talk about it more, is kind of, I think it's important that in some fashion the, the kind of goals that we have for the year also be kind of embedded in this. And so how we go about doing that, I think, is a, you know, one thing we have to work through. But anyway, questions, comments, thoughts? Looks good. David, you remember this, right? <laughs> can I make just one, one comment? Sure. Um, I, I know it sounds like super baseline, and I'm not sure what the plans are discussing and so like what it looks like, but I think at least electronic copy, we should try to solicit <laughs> pictures mm -hmm. and actual photographs of oh, yeah. like things that have been going on. It mm -hmm. just increases readability and yes. gets oh, more yeah. people wanting to flip through it, at yep. least electronically in, in color. Um, yep. I imagine that that was the case, but I think I yes. put a plug in for the visual. So yep. Fewer words, more graphics. Yeah, yep. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Text with yep. nothing else. Yeah. Okay. Even little bits of video, people are very oriented towards video. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Any other comments? Okay, thank oh. you. So, yeah, oh, sorry, David. Oh. Okay. Okay. And a second comment about athletics are fine, but extracurriculars should yeah. be violated. It should just be in extracurriculars instead of breaking down athletics, music, yeah, maybe drama. That would be, yeah, right. <laughs> Can we talk about renaming the subcommittee? Okay. We did. We, we did at one yeah. point. Yeah. Any other comments? All right. Um, are people fine with leaving it this way when we come back in September, uh, as as opposed to trying to create some common format for these goals? They're kind of they're different, but uh, it doesn't bother me. I don't know whether people feel like we need to have some common format. Are we posting it somewhere? Um, well, it becomes a public document. Then we should make it look better. <laughs> you can, my, Kendra, well, it sounds like you were interested Kendra. in <laughs> saying. Well, we want to change to right. There's edits to make. There's yeah. edits, but edits are different than complete yeah. changes. Yeah, it should probably all look the same yes. now, as far as we need some consistency. Yeah. Do we need to demonstrate consistency. We do. Yeah. Like, should. Is that something yes. that you wanted to do? Would you, if you would like me to do it, I will. I will send I think you the minor goal. edits to mine. And Why doesn't everyone do their edits based on today? And, send it to and then send it to me. Right. We'll do. And so you'll do a common format. Like the like main thing is a format. Yep, I will make, I will make a format. All right. Okay. You do, okay. Yes. Yeah. You're going to send us a format. Uh, no, 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 no. Just no, no. do right all We're your edits. We're just going to fix and then you'll the put content. Send them to me. Send me the accurate content, and I will create a format. Okay. All right. Well, you have all of these as Word documents. Oh, no, no you don't. No, no she's they're all PDF. sending them. Just make your no. edits and send them Do to me as Word. For smart girls? I have. Sure. Okay. okay. All right. So send it. To, uh, right. Make your edits and yep. send it to me, and I will. Okay. Okay. Easy right. peasy. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kendra. Appreciate it. Um, next up would be uh, Building for the Future of the Elementary Schools Project. Mark? Not much more to report than what I reported. At our last meeting, we are now getting into the cost estimating phase of these projects. Um, we'll be doing two different cost estimates, or our owner's project manager will do one, and the architects will do another one, and they will reconcile them and bring them to the committee. Um, it's probably going to be late September, early October. Mm -hmm. so that's where we are with that. What's the next meeting is scheduled? Is scheduled for September 4th. Mm. Just an FYI, speaking to the architect and the OPM today, we may cancel that meeting. No. I'll have more definite news either tomorrow or Thursday because we're in a, in a stage right now where he's not ready to move to the interior portions and we're not done with cost estimating. Okay. Oh. Okay. We, he feels that, we, and we both feel that we've worked the exterior of the buildings to the point where we're all comfortable and we, you know, the little tweaks will come later. Okay, great, all right. Thanks, Mark. High school? So, uh, at the high school building project update, uh, at this point in time, is focused on the fact that we went to the designer selection panel on August the 20th. Um, we being the town manager, Mark Sedaris and myself, um, we served as one of the 16, mem well, three of the 16 members of the designer selection panel that um, reviewed the proposals to um, become the designer for the high school project. Um, we reviewed eight proposals. Um, in the end, uh, we have three architects that are, are been moved forward to be interviewed. Um, one is AI3, um, which is our architect for our elementary school project, and we are very pleased with the work that they, they have done so far. Um, JCJ is the second, and Jonathan Levy is the third. Um, so our next steps with the high school project are um, on September 17th, we will go back to the designer selection panel at 8.30 a.m. Um, and we will hear actual presentations by these three firms and uh, a discussion will take place and a vote will be had to recommend um, one of those architects to our school building committee to move forward and try to negotiate a contract. So it is very exciting. They vote on the same day that they hear presentations? They, they do. Oh, wow. So <laughs> on September 17th, we will be able to um, let people know what that recommendation was from the designer selection panel. Um, and then, you know, from that point forward, we will conduct, we will kick off the feasibility study in earnest um, and begin the work of visioning and determining the site for the high school. Those are the first two big steps. 
Let me j just a clarification of language. You said the recommendation. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't they? The, the building committee doesn't take an action other than to negotiate, negotiate the contract. That's so, it. So right. If, if it fails negotiating the contract, then to back, back to the drawing to board. But, yep. Okay. But otherwise, it's this, the that's it. panel right. that's determining mm -hmm. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other other questions? So I, th that's a big step. Yeah. When that happens, yeah, it'll be. Awesome. And then I guess negotiating the contract will be key, and however, however long that takes. But once that's done, um, they're ready to go. Not uh, really. Pardon? Have to get the money first. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, good question. So, Mark. So, what? Um, to to you would have to for negotiate the contract. a contract, present that to the building committee, make a recommendation from the building committee to the town manager requesting okay. to fund okay. another contract. Okay. okay. So that's, which would include a first reading and so on and so forth. Okay. So we're not, it's uh, not as quick as you just described it. Yep, yep. As in like we're done. Okay. <laughs> not as quick as that. What? Done. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, next up would be the FY2020 budget update. Um, Ms. Perkin. Thank you. Um, I actually gave two budget reports. I gave the final one um, in the packet for 19. It just shows really very little changing from the last one in June. However, once the final approval was in the system after the committee voted to do the um, bottom floor of the middle school next year and the affiliated uh, asbestos abatement, um, that was approved in the system. And so that's why, although most of the significant budget um, transfers were done, budget amendments were done. That one, if you added up the positive in facilities for the salary and the deficit in facilities for the non-salary, it shows about a 380,000 deficit in that cost center, which is offset by the positives in the other cost center. So I just wanted to point that out why that did not have a budget amendment. It, it wasn't decided until the same night as the other amendments were approved. So on the FY 2020, there's not a lot to report. Of course, school you know has isn't up and running yet, so all of our uh, returning staff and new staff have not been activated in the system to see their encumbrances and the salaries. I'm saying this for people at home who might look at the packet online. <coughs> um, and of course, you know, there's a lot of ordering and a lot of um, goods coming in, but the majority of the expense really does still happen throughout the year. Um, it's too early to say where we may have any pressure points or savings um, that will really come further down in the fall. And again, we're still in negotiations with all of our contracts. So once we have those um, ratified and other staff increases, the non-aligned staff have been determined, the amount that's in the administration salary line, which is not just for that, there's other things in there, um, for lane changes and turnover, will be allocated into the appropriate expense accounts in their cost center. Mostly, I know the committee knows all of that, but all for right. other people at home or people looking at the packet, wanted to point that out. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Thank Perkins. You. Uh, questions on the budget? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Uh, warrants. We have a list of the warrants there. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I'll move on. Um, school committee chair, I just have a, uh, a brief comment that I want to make that uh, uh, kind of welcome to all the teachers, particularly the teachers and staff that are starting the new school year. Today was the opening day, and I suspect the superintendent will make a comment about that. Um, I thank Lindsay and, and uh, Amy that were also at the meeting this morning. Um, and uh, it, was, it was great to see a lot of people there kind of energized and excited about the coming year. Um, I made a, a, a brief comment uh, about kind of framing the moving forward in the, the schools. I talked a little bit about kind of curriculum and things happening in the schools, and I, I mentioned the buildings. But I also did talk about briefly the collective bargaining uh, situation, and I just want to kind of reiterate the statement that I made uh, at that time. Um, and I, I did say that we are in the midst of negotiations with all of our collective bargaining units and that contract negotiations are a challenging time uh, for both parties. And that I also made a statement, which I want to again say here again, is that you know, it's my commitment and I think the school committee's commitment is to find common ground that works for the school district as a whole but also recognizes 
the very important contributions and value in this district provided by teachers, coordinators, instructional assistants, uh, and all the facilities and support staff. And then I'm optimistic that we can reach that common ground. So we do have some challenges in front of us with respect to negotiations, but I think all of us are gonna try to do the best we can to, to, uh, to meet a, a good point for everybody. So that's my report, um, Superintendent. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, so I would just like to echo the, um, the sentiment of welcoming our staff back. Um, I think that everybody had a fantastic summer um, and it was great to kick off our year in a very high and positive way. Um, we met this morning at the, in the high school auditorium and after the opening remarks um, from John, myself, um, Deb King, and then Teresa had the introduction to our keynote. We were um, delighted to have um, John Safier come and speak to all of our teachers. He is um, pretty renowned for um, knowing inside and out what it means to be an effective teacher. So having him kick off our year and speaking about high expectations teaching, I think set the tone um, for what it is that we wish to accomplish um, in this coming year. I would be remiss in not thanking um, Dr. McGinnis for sure and her professional development team um, who have worked tirelessly and since probably about January of last year to um, put together the opening day's agenda in terms of not just the keynote speaker, but everything that's coming um, in the next two days as well. Um, we're very excited about that opportunity for our staff and it is just once again excited. I'm, I'm excited to be back in, um, in full swing and we are ready for a great year here in Watertown. Um, just as a reminder, we're welcoming our students back on September 3rd. I'm very uh, happy to have our students rejoining us um, and welcoming our kindergartners in um, a little bit later that week. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time in our schools. Um, I would also like to give a, a big um, shout out to our uh, custodial staff and our facilities people in terms of um, getting our buildings ready. Um, you know, across the board, things are really shaping up. Um, I always feel uh, that the middle school is probably one of the last because of Camp Paquasset. Not, I mean, it's an excellent program, but we have to shift and, and make our, our attention there. And you know, right now they're working their hardest to get it into shape, but we, are, we will be ready for the walkthrough on um, Friday morning. Anyone who would like to join us to walk through the buildings um, on the school committee is more than welcome to do so. We'll meet here at the high school at 8.30 um, to start the, the tours. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention, um, you know, we're, we're doing very well in terms of coordinating our transportation, um, but we are very excited at this point. Um, we've talked about this for many years about the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we've been able to do busing from the Hosmer to the Boys and Girls Club after school um, for families that would like to be able to take advantage of that transportation. Um, but this year we're able to work through um, with our transportation company to provide that from all three of our elementary schools. Okay. Yeah, so we're very excited so. about that. Um, I think, you know, we've had open conversations around um, equity and, um, you know, there's something about not being able to do that for everybody. And this year, thanks to Ms. Perkins, who's worked really hard with our transportation company, um, we're able to do so. So um, we'll have information coming out tomorrow about that um, opportunity. Some Thank you. Details of how that. it's gonna happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, how you would sign news. up and you know how many seats are available and you know we'll we'll figure it out from there. So. Okay. I know that's not easy and I really appreciate right. creating that opportunity for all three elementary schools. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, any other uh, new business? I, I do have something to add for new business. There's a um, a family that is has an incoming freshman who is at a, attending a virtual school. Oh. And I know um, the members of the committee have received information about this. Um, and they are looking to, for their, for their child to participate in athletics through the high school. Our policy currently does not allow for that. So I would, I would make, I'd like to make a motion to refer this to the policy subcommittee to have a discussion about this. There are, um, whether, you know, just to have a discussion about this. Perfect. Is there a second? Second. Second, any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nice no, to have it. Thank you. So that'll go to the uh, Eileen. You can follow up. I think the superintendent's had some conversations about it with, as well. So, yep. Okay, good. Um, announcements, the school committee meeting next is September 9th, which will be in town hall. Um, oh, can I have this announcement? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Me now. Oh, yeah, so I have an announcement. Um, so as a former Watertown High School field hockey player myself, um, uh, it's such an honor to announce that Eileen Donahue is being inducted to the 
the National Field Hockey Coaches Association Hall of Fame this year. She says she's entering her 33rd season. Her record is 662 wins, <laughs> 32 losses, and 46 ties. She has 18 Real. Division II state titles, Real. 25 Division II North titles, and 28 Middlesex League titles. So it's quite a record, and um, it's, it's an amazing accomplishment, and we're really lucky to have her in Watertown. So. Yeah. Even though she's not here, give her a hand. And congratulations to her. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other announcements? That's not uh, public forum? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think as I sent an email around, I did add uh, a late agenda item, the, an executive session to this meeting, which uh, we will go to now. So uh, I believe what the procedure here would be to ask for a motion to adjourn into executive session for the purpose of discussion of collective bargaining, uh, as it would be detrimental to do so in a public session. But the, and that part of that motion would be we will not return to open session. So moved. Second. Is that correct, Mark? Yes, correct. We need a roll call on this, though. Okay. So and we'll do a roll call on this one. Then we'll go into executive session. Um, Ariel, where is she still here? She's there. Ariel. Okay. We'll do a roll call. <coughs> Take off the name. It's fine. Yes. 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 Yes.